In this quick example, I have a return number function defined with an integer return type and it just returns 10. So when I call it, install the value inside number and we print to the console, this will print out 10. But let's say we didn't want to use a return type of integer because we wanted to return something else, but we also wanted to return the number 10. Integer into return type is void. And then as a parameter, we can explore this new keyword called out. We can say out int, and then we can have a number. And what this will do was give us the opportunity to return back an integer from our function without having it as the return type. So instead of return 10, we can actually just say number equals 10. And what that will do now is our function has no syntax errors. As you can see, there's no red underlines, but we have a red underline here. We can't directly assign the value to it because there's no return type, as it says void. So what we can do instead is we can call return number and in the brackets, we could say out int num. So now we've just created a local variable called num. What we could do alternatively, if it works better for you, is you can declare number with the value zero, and then you could take the word int out and you can say when the return number finishes, it will place the value inside num. So this should still equal 10. So what's happening here is we're declaring a new integer variable and we're saying when the return number finishes, then we want to store the value of number inside our num variable. So if we run the code, we have 10. If you remember from a previous video, int.tryparse uses exactly the same thing. You try and parse something and you have an int number in here, exactly like that. It will try and parse whatever's in here. And in the video, we explored how to convert from a string to an integer safely. And this is how you do it. And their exact example in the try parse, they actually return a bool. The bool represents whether the conversion has been successfully converted or not. So let's try and make a function that's similar to how try parse works. So if you assume we had something like a list of strings that was like a shopping list. And let's just say we had two options in here, coffee and milk. And let's just keep the list short. So to get a quick for loop typed in, we can type in for and then hit tab twice and we get this and the highlighted sections we can jump through using tab. So we press tab once, then we go to the length and the length in this case is the shopping list dot count. And then inside the parentheses, we can actually just do a search. So in order to be able to search, we can do if the shopping list brackets I, cause we're talking about the index here and we can say to lower just so we don't have to deal with lowercase and we say dot equals. And then let's just have something static typed in like coffee. And then just to keep it consistent, let's do two lower as well. So you're comparing two items that have been lowercase. So this will change it to a lowercase C in this case. Now, if this has been found in any of these two positions, then we'll need to assign something in here. So let's make a new variable called index and we'll assign it to minus one. So we can say index equals I. I is whatever position we're currently up to in the for loop. And after we finished our for loop, we can say if the index is greater than minus one, because we've initialized it to minus one. And if it's been changed by this line of code, then because the for loop starts at zero, then this condition should always be true. And we can say found. And in the else, we can say not found. So now if we run our code, you see that it has indeed been found because coffee equals to coffee. If we just add another E and run our code again, we can see it's not been found. So now our search function essentially works. So let's try and put this into a function and have our out parameter as well as a return type as boolean. So we want to be able to get into a situation where we can return the index of the found variable, but also return whether it was found or not. So we don't have to compare the index. So let's start with the definition. We can say static and we want it to return a boolean and we can just say find in list and we'll need to take in the list. So in this case, it's a list of strings. Then we'll need the actual input from the user. And then we'll need the index that we actually output back to the user. So there's our basic setup. So let's try and port this code over now. So if we just copy all of this straight inside, and we don't need to declare the integer index anymore, so we just have to assign it because we've already got the variable up here. So let's just assign the integer index because that's our first thing to do. And we don't have a shopping list anymore because our parameter is called list. So let's copy and paste that in. And then we're not going to be using a static coffee because now we have our string input. So let's replace that with input. And then this stays the same. Instead of having an if statement to decide whether it's been found or not, the best way to do it because we return a boolean is to actually return a boolean that we've created. 
So we can say bool found equals false. And if we found it in here, we could say found equals true. And then we can remove all these lines of code. And then we can simply just do return found. Alternatively, if you wanted to abandon the found variable, then what you could do is you can return index is greater than minus one. Because if index is greater than minus one, then this will return true. And if it's not greater than minus one, then it'll return false, which is in essence what the Boolean variable is doing. I just find it a little bit neater so you can track where the things are going. So let's just keep this as return found. So let's try and actually use it in our code now. So we could say console write line, remove the line, and say enter a value to search. String input equals console.readline. And then we can call our find a list function and our shopping list and then our input, and then we can have an out int index. So now we've called our function, but we haven't done anything with the Boolean response. So because this is a Boolean response, we can wrap the entire thing inside an if statement. So if inside here, that must mean that we've returned true and we found the item. So we can say found item zero at index one, and then comment delimited list. So found item, so the found item input that the user's typed in, and then the index is that index variable. And then else we can just say console write line, not found. Now let's see how a search function works. Select a value search, coffee, and it can be a lowercase because we're using our two lower functions, and it says found item coffee at index zero. And let's rerun it and just try milk. There we go, it's found at index one. And remember the indexes are zero base, not one base. So coffee was the first option and milk was the second one. So let's just have a quick recap. We started the video by explaining how to use the out keyword to just return a simple variable instead of using the return type. And you can do this as shown here. We can have it into norm equals zero and then we can output the value into our integer variable. If you want to declare this in the same bit as well, you can have this as intonum and then get rid of the declaration. So you can declare the variables straight inside the out parameter. And then once it gets outputted, the value is 10. Here I was just demonstrating that this out parameter works similar to what I've covered in the past with the integer try pass function. It will take in a string input and then it'll output your number to you. And it'll also return a boolean. So you have a return type as a boolean and an out variable. This is very handy because when it comes to our function, when we're finding things inside the list, we have the list, the input that the user's typed in, and we give back the index. So we search through the list, make sure the two values equal each other, and we're using the two lower values just so we don't have to deal with uppercase and lowercase. And once we found the index, we can assign it to our out variable, and then we can set b found equals true. And if this line has been executed, then we found a match. If it hasn't been executed, then found will stay false. So we return it at the end of our function, and then we can make use of it in here. We can ask the user to enter a value to search, read in their input using console read line, and then call our function. And because it returns a boolean, we can place it straight into the bracket. If you do not like this approach, you can store it in a boolean first and just say boolean success equals, take all of this code and cut it into here add a semicolon, and then you could just place your boolean variable in there. So if it's been successful, then we output to the user that we found the item zero at index one, item zero will be the input and item one will be the index. If this function has returned false, that means we haven't found it and therefore it will go into the else and print out not found to the user. This video is made possible by my awesome Patreons, DP Unique and Tominator. Thank you so much for your continued support. If you have any questions, comment them below or join the Discord server to gain your own personal help channel for instant access to answers. I'm currently creating my C Sharp course, or it could already be finished by the time you see this, so please make sure to check the banners above or the description as the link may already be there. The course will cover tutorials, tasks, exercises, and projects in order for you to never enter tutorial hell and be able to write amazing programs all on your own. I'll be providing discount for my subscribers and Patreons, so if this interests you, make sure you subscribe and stay up to date with the channel. I'll see you in the next one.